Kenobi hasn't even came out yet. And I do have my concerns. Many of you have concerns. But don't forget, we're all in this together. Hello there. Welcome back to Echo Base Network. I'm the coach, and I'm glad that you have joined us today. Even though you just clicked on our video, we can already tell. The Force is strong with you. Before we report on today's news updates, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you really like the channel, become a member today. And finally, head over to our merch store for some awesome gear. That's a great way to support the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenobi is just eight days away. There's been a lot of information to unpack in the last 48 hours from the Vanity Fair article, and I have to be honest, I'm excited. But my excitement doesn't mean that I'm not concerned about whether or not I think the show will be good or great. I am hopeful that it will be, and I think I will always be hopeful that Star Wars will be great. But I'm not blind to our current reality. Before the book of Boba Fett aired, I was confident that the show was going to be great. I mean, how could it not be? in the hands of John Favreau and Dave Filoni, especially just coming off the season two finale of The Mandalorian. We've discussed all of the leaks that have been reported from making Star Wars, so we aren't really going to get into all of that here. This video today is about laying out what I'm hopeful for. I guess you could say that this is my personal checklist. Does it mean that if my expectations aren't met, I won't like it? Not necessarily. I'm going to give the show a fair shot, no matter what, but as always, I will call it as I see it. So here it is, my top 10 list of preferences or concerns for Kenobi. Number one, don't give us an Obi-Wan that strays too far away from the Kenobi that we all know and love. Yes, yes, we know he's broken and he's not quite the same. This show will be sort of a redemption where we will see him come back to who he was before. The majority of the fandom does not like the new iterations though of old characters like Luke Skywalker in the sequels, or even this new Boba Fett that we have. Don't make the same mistake again with Kenobi. Concern number two, the Inquisitors must be a real threat. Using the book of Boba Fett again as an example, I never felt a sense of danger with the Pike Syndicate. We were told that they were dangerous, feared, and a viable threat, but I just didn't see it with my own eyes. The Inquisitors cannot become some Saturday morning cartoon villain. Number three, many people are hung up on Vader saying, when I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. I'm not hung up on that at all. Instead, I would like to have a better understanding of the following scene. Come with me. Obi-Wan once thought as you do. You don't know the power of the dark side. I must obey my master. Number four. Rogue One was a very good Star Wars film, if not a great one. We had two fantastic Darth Vader scenes. With the return of Hayden Christensen, I think it's really important that we get the right amount of Vader in this series. And right now, I don't know how much that is. Number five. Sell the plot. It took several episodes for me to know what The Mandalorian was going to be about. None of us knew the role of Grogu or Baby Yoda at the time. And even through the first four or five episodes, I was wondering when Baby Yoda was not going to be around anymore. It took me the first season to realize what the show was going to be and come to the conclusion that The Mandalorian is actually a poorly titled show, as it really isn't about just him at all. Number six. Speaking of a show with no true direction, The Book of Boba Fett, I still don't know what I watched. The best episodes didn't even feature the main protagonist of the show. Kenobi cannot pull that crap. Number seven, we do not need filler. Let me repeat that, we do not need filler. You have six episodes to tell us this standalone story, this limited story. On opening night, we are literally getting one third of the entire story. That's 33% folks. We will only have four episodes remaining after opening night and there is no time to waste time. Number eight, new characters need to be important. 
We don't want a bunch of characters who are just along for the ride or seemingly just stand-ins. Conversely, new characters like Reva do not need to be more important than they ought to be. Keep the focus on Kenobi. Number nine, every scene of the show should either work within the confines of the sequel trilogy and original trilogy stories or enhance them. Don't change things that we know, love, and are extremely familiar with that has actually become part of our DNA. And lastly, guys, number 10, Kenobi better be the hero of this show. New characters cannot outshine him. New characters cannot be the sole reason for Kenobi's success, thusly making them the hero or seen as such. Can they share in Kenobi's success? Sure, but I do not want to see Kenobi, whose heroism is directly the result of another character. Obi-Wan must have challenges that he must overcome. So there you have it, folks, my top 10 list for the upcoming show, Kenobi. Let me know in the comments what you think. I can't wait to read them. Thank you so much for coming to Echo Base Network today, where we will continue to provide Star Wars and entertainment news, updates, lore, and more. And we would love to have you join us on our weekly Echo Base Network Star Wars and entertainment show that we call EBN Live, each Saturday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. As always, we are, you are, Echo Base Network. May the Force be with you. And I'll see you guys on the next one.